afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation Subcommittee on Aviation Operations, Safety, and Security. We're having a hearing today on air traffic control safety oversight, and we are joined by witnesses, the Honorable Randy Babbitt, uh, FAA Administrator, and the Honorable Calvin Scoville, Inspector General, U.S. Department of Transportation, Paul Rinaldi, President of the Air Traffic Controllers Association, and Dr. Greg Belinke, Director of Sleep and Performance Research Center at Washington State University. Thank you all very much for being here. Today, the Aviation Committee is holding an oversight hearing on air traffic control safety. And I know my colleague, uh, Senator Thune, will be here soon, but I want to recognize him in his new role as ranking member for this subcommittee, and I say that I look forward to working with him. The two issues we are going to focus on uh, basically our ad advent of a series of recent incidents where air traffic controllers fell asleep during night shifts and the increase in the number of reported operational errors by air traffic controllers. As you know, this year there have been a number of incidents involving air traffic controllers sleeping on duty, and I'm deeply concerned, as I know the chairman of the full committee is, about these incidents. Some are clearly examples of unprofessional behavior on part of an individual controller. Their actions are totally unacceptable. Controllers do have a professional responsibility to come to work rested. Unfortunately, some have used those incidents to try and, and tarnish the reputation of a dedicated group of men and women who do work every day to ensure that our airspace is the safest in the world. Air traffic controllers monitor 35,000 flights daily Said another way, roughly two million air passengers come into direct contact or come into contact with air traffic control each day. We can talk about how the next gen technologies are going to help us improve this system, but we can't forget that at the heart of our air traffic control system are approximately 15,000 air traffic controllers. The incidents do serve to highlight the legitimate safety issues of air traffic controller fatigue particularly those working on the midnight shift. There is no escaping the science that shift work has the potential to disrupt the circadian rhythms of the body and often leads to fatigue. Fatigue can seriously impair the work performance of individuals such as air traffic controllers who perform tasks that require consistent concentration. Ultimately, this raises concerns for safe operations of the air traffic control system. I applaud Secretary LaHood and Administrator Babbitt for taking some quick actions. I know that these actions will be helpful and hope to improve some of the situation. The National Transportation Safety Board has examined and made recommendations on air traffic controller fatigue, most recently in the aftermath of the 2006 crash of the Comair 1591 in Lexington, Kentucky. It took until 2009 for the FAA in and NACTA to get their fatigue work group underway. My understanding is that they have jointly made a dozen recommendations to mitigate air traffic controller fatigue. The first two recommendations have to do with allowing air traffic controllers to recuperate during their break shift, particularly in the midnight shift. Historically, the question of allowing air traffic controllers to take a break or nap has been a political one rather than a scientific one. There are decades of science uh, on this issue, and we look forward to hearing more about it today. Uh, and I want to say to Dr. Belinke, thank you for com coming all the way from the West Coast, from Washington State University, and we look to hear more about the Sleep and Performance Research Center and the sciences behind that center. I am likewise concerned by the 53% increase in reported operational errors between fiscal year 2009 and 2010. Operational errors are situations where planes come too close to one another in the air. The number of operational errors increased from approximately 1,200 in 2009 to 1,900 last year. The errors were of varying degrees, and I'm sure we'll get into that during the hearing. On March 2nd, the committee asked the DOT IG to conduct an assessment of the FAA's current categorization of operational errors to better understand the impact and actual implications of this. In last decade, the IG identified the problems uh, 
with how most FAA facilities self-reported operational errors, and the IG expressed concern that there was a significant potential for under-reporting operational errors. Beginning in 2008, the FAA made a series of changes. It initiated the Air Traffic Safety Action Program, a confidential reporting system to encourage air traffic controllers to come forward with these reported errors and it began rolling out an automated reporting of operational errors through a new software system called the Traffic Analysis and Review Program. The committee is trying to understand if the reasons more errors are being reported is because of the FAA finally having a more objective and reliable process or whether we are seeing just a more increase in errors. So I thank all of you for being here today. Look forward to your testimony at the hearing and coming up with answers on how to continue to improve air transportation safety. I'd like to call on the chairman of the full committee if he'd like to make an opening statement.